Feliz Sabbath, Feliz Sabado, Pleasant Sabbath, Sabbath Shalom. However you may express it, it is a special day the Lord has blessed. I am excited you chose ASI Media Tobago for your worship experience. And we have something special in store for you. Today, the Harmon School of Seventh-day Adventists presents its consecration service for the graduating class of 2021. And you have made the VIP guest list. So sit back and get ready to worship with the leaders of tomorrow as they present Smile, We Are Victorious. An invitation is also extended to you to join in their commencement service tomorrow. An invitation is also extended for you to join in their commencement ceremony tomorrow right here at 2 p.m. And to our regular viewers, we know you look forward each week for lesson study and the Kingdom Children. We have you covered. Join us later at 3.30 p.m. for our regular ASI Sabbath morning service. Are you ready, past, present, and future harmonites? And of course, all the well-wishers? Let us celebrate our graduating class of 2021. Good morning, my name is Carissa Loveless, the PRO of the graduating class of 2021 of Harmon School of Seven-Day Adventists. At Harmon, we usually have two programs for all graduation, the church service on Sabbaths called the consecration service and our commencement exercises on Sunday. Today, we have our consecration service and we begin with Sabbath school. Our Sabbath service today will take on a different format and we hope you will enjoy the worship with us. We do thank ASI for partnering with us to showcase the world our smile that declares that we are victorious and to declare to the world that Jesus has been good to the class of 2021. I will be your host today along with Jade Sandy, my classmate from all graduating class. So without further ado, let us begin this experience, a journey with the graduating class as we celebrate our theme, Smile, We Are Victorious. Please do not adjust your device. We are about to experience the Harmon News Network. Stay tuned in as we tell the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ.
morning to our listening audience out there today. My name is Jade Sandy. Welcome to the Harmon News Network. We are so happy to have you joining us today. And I am Carissa Lovis. Pleasant summer to our online viewers. Before we move into the broadcast today, we want to pause and pray. I remember that at Harmon, we begin everything with prayer. <laughs> Bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to another Sabbath day. As we go through this consecration service today, help it to run smoothly. Please help our viewers to be touched and blessed. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go right into our leading story for today. And in the news this morning, Harmon School of SDA graduates 57 students wow. in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thrust from the conference of their classrooms in early March of last year, 2020, these students were forced to adapt to the endless hours of online school. Separated from their teachers, their friends, and forced to adapt to a new normal, somehow they survived and today are claiming victory. How do you survive in such tough times? What are your struggles? What are the mountains in your life? What do you do when giving up seems to be the only option? Today, as we delve into their stories, maybe you will find the answer to some of these questions. At this time, we move straight into a very special feature, especially geared towards building your hope and giving you an opportunity to be a part of the celebratory mode here at Harmon News Network this morning. Feel free to tap your feet. Clap your hands as we have a celebratory moment led by one Harmon Pass student, Brother Lindell Loveless. What a mighty God we serve. Say, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, let's sing that one more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice glad in it saying this is the day this is the day that the lord has made he's able he's able i know he's able i know my lord is able to carry me through he's able he's able I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. For he has healed the broken hearted and set the captive free. He made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see. I know he's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Which side are you leaning on, leaning on the Lord's side? Which side are you leaning on, leaning on the Lord's side? I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean, leaning on the Lord's side. Which side are you leaning on, leaning on the Lord's side? Which side are you leaning on, leaning on the Lord's side? I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. Which side are you praying on? Praying on the Lord's side. Come on, which side are you praying on? Praying on the Lord's side. I shall not suffer. I shall not bear for bread. I shall not suffer. I shall not bear for bread. My daddy, oh, he is my daddy, oh, he is my daddy, oh, that's why I love him so. I 
to start the morning here at Harmon News Network. Yes, it reminded me of song service on Monday at Chapel in Harmon. The days when the church would be packed, we sat shoulder to shoulder with some sing inspirations out, each class trying to out-sing the other. Oh yes, I call those the good old massless days. I smile when I remember them. Our leading story today, coming out of Harmon, suggests that there is still much to smile about. These young people, in spite of their challenges, have proclaimed victory. And I believe that our news desk has just received information on the origins of the sorority from a source that worked closely to the organization. Let me read it for you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 78 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who have loved his appearing. Well, it's clear to me that whenever you live your life based on the promises of Christ, you will be able to proclaim victory in every battle and have a victorious spiritual life in Christ. Here at HNN, we value our children. They are the future. They are the Lord's heritage. This morning, we have a special segment just for them. But before we do that, we have a member from the graduating class of 2021 who will share with us a talent that kept her smiling through the tough times. I love you, Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my hands, oh, I will sing of your goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful, and all my life, you have been so, so. Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Oh, I will say. Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good And every breath that I am made I will sing of the 
My name is Amy. My graduation is in the air. As a student of the Harmon School of FBA, get ready for the grand graduation service. And we have live at the compound one of our Shining Light news reporter, Mark. Live at Harmon School of FBA, just to interview this wonderful student who have accomplished such great thing in life. And uh, we have Mark live here with us today. Mark, what is the atmosphere like at the school? Good day. The atmosphere is amazing as these students get ready for a new chapter in their life. I'm here with one of the graduates who will share with us her experience in the fifth form. Hi, my name is Jonal Nichols and I am one of the fifth formers at the Harmon School of SD. <clears throat> Share with us your experience. For me, fifth form at home wasn't really easy because it had some things you won't understand unless you're in their face to face like for maths. Some things the teacher had to sit down and write and show us and then she had to come to us and explain it to make us understand whereas online we wasn't really understanding fully what we were able to grasp the concept. What kept me going was my mother, she kept saying, you can do it no matter what or how you feel, push because Jesus is with you. And the text that kept me going through was Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Encourage the children who are going into fifth form, I would like to say, practice makes perfect nothing is possible without god do not wait until last minute to start studying it is better to start now than later you'll feel relief and you'll feel more confident in yourself thank you hi i am kelson roberts and i attended harmon school of sda from 2016 to 2021 last year Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, students were forced to remain at home. And this was also true for me as I attended Harmon School of SDA at the point in time. The sudden shift in students' life threw some of them into a frenzy. This caused a lot of students to not attend classes online and as such they missed out great opportunities for learning. My experience with that online learning was a pretty great one. At first it was kind of weird as, as I wasn't accustomed to doing learning online and also at home in my house. Which made it pretty hard to understand the work 
at some point in time. But eventually, I became accustomed to the online learning and things gradually became easier. This was all possible with the help of my mother. She was, she was there for me all the time and she kept cheering me on through this journey. And one Bible text that I kept repeating over and over in my heart is Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One word of encouragement that I have to students who are entering into the form is to never give up because there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. Things will get better, so just hang in there. I promise you this. We will just take a moment to get the weather updates with one of the best weatherman here. He always gets the weather right. Tell us, what is the weather for today? The weather for today is full of smiles. May the joy of the our Lord, the light of his love, and beauty all around uplift and strengthen you. That is the weather for today. You can smile when you can't say a word. Thank you. You see, my friend, you always get the weather right. So back to you, Mark, at Hammer School. I hope it's our food here for me when I finish here. We, we alive again? So, hi. I am Carissa Loveless. I am a student of the fifth form class. My experience in fifth form was a very tough one due to the COVID pandemic, learning online and preparing for exams itself. You know, um, going, doing online school was very challenging because although the teachers were there teaching, I was not beginning anything what i had to do was sit down and teach myself over what the teachers would have gone through that day for me to understand what was really going on can you tell me which bible text helped you in all of this one bible text that carried me through well in the exam time period was joshua 1 9 where it says have i not commanded thee be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with the, whithsoever thou goest. What words of encouragement would you like to share with the new students that are facing Form 5 in a new school term? Encouragement for fifth form? Guys, just pray. Prayer helps with everything. Talking to God daily, getting text that fits your situation is another motivation as well have a study partner and always be positive because from the time you start to think negative is when everything around you will be affected negatively and you wouldn't want that at all so think positive have a study buddy pray to god get a script here hello sir what encouraging words will you like to share with the students? It is, it is with pleasure that I extend my congratulations to the class of 2021. You are an amazing bunch of students and you've come through a, a tough time, but you've made it and I can see you all smiling because you all are indeed victorious. You've, got, you've been through a lot. You've come through a lot and you've come through smiling. I saw the smiles even through your CXC exams, even beyond the mask. You all were smiling. You all kept positive and you all kept joyful despite the circumstances. I'm so impressed with you all and I'm so much, so much in, in a position to commend you all because of what I've seen in your journey. You came into Form 1 as little boys and little girls. And now you're leaving as gentlemen and young ladies. Represent God as you step forward. Represent him and just do your best. You all are amazing students. And I do wish you all all the best. Harmon wishes you all all the best. The Harmon family, parents, staff, board members, everybody 
we just wish you all the best and i'm sure the students who who would have seen you as members of this school also wish you the best so go forth conquer keep smiling because indeed you're victorious well that's all from me out here back to you that is all for us today folks at shining light news thank you very much for joining us see you next time goodbye and remember now you can smile because you are victorious goodbye Angelica for declaring victory as a young woman who has decided to use her talent to glorify the kingdom of God. And that local production created just for our younger viewers was quite enticing. I am sure I heard Rachel Fraser and Imani Forbes voices coming out of there. A special thank you to our local cartoonist for sharing his gift and making us smile. Talking about smiling, today we have a special group of persons from the Harmon family who are smiling from ear to ear because they are celebrating something great this month. This is what is done every month at Harmon's by the chaplaincy, the birthday video. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
In other news this morning, HNN recommends New Start program. What's that you may ask? Simply put, it's making wise lifestyle choices to ensure that your body is healthy. Let's switch to this commercial break. Maybe you will be persuaded to try a new start. I forgot to mention that main actor who is playing the role of son and the one playing the role of father are from the graduating class. What? Set. Boom.
Whoa, look at that smile. Indeed, victory can be yours. Mm -hmm. Many times, this means changing the way we do things. It means sacrifice, hard work, but the foundation is obedience. I have learned that following God's instruction leads to victory. What a powerful message of living our lives in mm. the power that Christ gives us. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to shift gears and join our HNN Roman reporter, Angelica Bedlow, live at the Harmon Compound, where she will be catching up with some of our graduates and sharing with our live audience the Harmon experience. Each journey is different, yet after five years in a nurturing Christian environment, I am sure they have all experienced growth. Smile, we are victorious. You may be wondering what that phrase means. Thank you, Jade and Carissa, for allowing me to take over this time. Good day, everyone. My name is Angela Cabello, reporting live from the Harmon School of SDA. And I'd be interviewing just a few of our graduates who you can see are overwhelmed with what looks as joy for the achievements they have accomplished during this very challenging time. Good day, sir. How are you doing today? Can you please tell me a little about yourself and also your unique experience at Harmons? In addition to what this poster, Smile We Are Victorious, really means to you. Uh, hello, good day. Uh, my name is Jabari Roberts. Uh, I'm doing well, as you can see. My most unique experience at Amazon was that not only was the school focusing on academics, but, but the school also was focusing on bringing our students closer to God. And I must say that was a very, very good experience. Uh, well, this poster, Smile We Are Victorious, means to me that growing up in the school and coming up in it, it just taught me so much and I'm very grateful and thankful for it and that I know at the end I will be victorious. Amen. Well done. Thank you for your time, sir. Hello, good day. Can you please tell me your name? My name is Jonel Nichols. Okay, and uh, also, can you tell me the experience? How has Harmons been for you so far? Okay, so my experience at Harmons was really good. When I first arrived, because I'm a transfer, I was very nervous, but everyone made me feel comfortable. As time passed by, I realized that everyone treated you like family, no matter who you are. If they see you are struggling, they will lend a helping hand and help you until you get through it. If they see you are sad and you're not acting the way you normally would, they will come and help you and try to help you fix the problem in what way they can. And you know what? The teachers at this school, the teachers, they treated you like their own child. They also dedicated a lot of their time and ensured that no one was left behind. I heard you mention that you were a transferred student. Can you please tell me your experience at your old school? Take me back then. My experience at my old school was good as well. The school had a lot of dedicated teachers and they encouraged me to excel and attain my dreams. I had a lot of ideas of what I wanted to pursue. But when I decided my career, I realized that the subjects I chose, they were not aligned. And I, I really became demotivated. As such, the reason I transferred was to get the opportunity to study the subjects needed so I can be able to carry out my career path. And one thing I would like to do, I would like to thank the principal and staff of the Harmon School of SDA for accepting me. Very good. Okay. And also, can you tell me what does the phrase smile we are victorious means to you? Sure. So the school mainly focused on establishing and maintaining our relationship with Jesus. As Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. The teachers encouraged us to work hard and pray. Also, when we were giving up, or felt like giving up, and we were not understanding the subject matter, they told us to put our trust in God, because with God, anything is possible. So, with much confidence, I can say, praying, working hard, and putting my trust in God, 
all contributed to me being victorious. Whoa, that was indeed a mouthful. Thank you for your time and may God continue to bless you. Thank you. Hello, good day. Can you please tell me your name? Hi, I'm Kelson Roberts. And can you tell me your experience at Harmons thus far? My experience at Harmons is a pretty great one. You know, like all the stuff that I learned from Harmons has helped me to become a better person because I've, my first experience at Harmons was me being a pretty shy person who didn't have any confidence in myself. But because of the love and attention that Harmons gave me, I was able to become a more outspoken individual. How has the experience at Harmons contributed to your growth? Well, due to the love and attention that my family at Harman gave me, I was able to grow and become a more outspoken person. And now I am able to come and give, do this interview. Has it also benefited you spiritually? And if so, can you please tell me how? Yes, this has benefited me spiritually due to the, all the attention that Ms. Kirk gave me, helping me to complete all my assignments in Bible class and so on. Now today I am even closer to with God than when I first entered Harmon. So much so I went and I got baptized. Congratulations! And also, what does the phrase, smile we are victorious, mean to you? The phrase, smile we are victorious, means to me that all the experience at Harmon's for all the students has made it so that we can all smile and, know, and we can all know that because of Harmon's, we are victorious. Well done. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, you have heard it for yourself. The students of Harmon's have spoken. And we all can agree that the experience at Harmon's has indeed been positive. And they can all... Smile, we are victorious. Well... It seems Angelica has some extra coverage for us. She has apparently captured live video of a small group of youth engaged in some deep biblical discussions. Delightful, isn't it? Something to smile about. Indeed, the youth are the ones who will ensure that the good news of salvation and victory continues to be proclaimed on this earth. Switching back now, as Angelica allows you to listen in. Hey, fellas, well, you ever had that one person in church who always trying to marry you or someone else off? Yeah. 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 It had me wondering, why do some people ought to be single? Well, you could, it has, people choose to be single for many mm. reasons. Right. Some for selfish reasons that they don't want to make any children or to spend any money on family or just, and just themselves. But is it wrong to be single? Hmm. Well, no, it isn't wrong to be single. In fact, there are three categories of singleness. The first category are individuals who are naturally born single from their mother's womb. They were born with the gift of singleness, and marriage just isn't for them because of their biology. Okay, well, I believe there's another category. And some persons who made single by being eunuchs, and a eunuch is a person who was castrated when they were young to prevent them from getting high testosterone levels, being aggressive, being rebellious in their teens and youth, and impregnating women. Right, and I think there's a third also in it, because there are those who choose to be single. They choose to be single for the sake of heaven. They choose to use their time to support God and bring people to him. But why was Jesus single? Well, Jesus was single because his purpose on earth wasn't to get married. His duty was to die on the cross for us. And Jesus being single just proves that single people could still be highly devoted to God. But however, being married does not diminish the fact that it is advantageous. Aside from Jesus, who are some other people in, in the Bible that were single? Well, okay, there is Paul in 1 Corinthians 7. Paul outlines that individuals who are single should be able to use their time for God. And there are also Daniel in the Bible who was single because of his position in Babylon. One common theme in, what, in that 
whatever course of life you are in, whether it be single or married, you should do it in the glory of heaven. Since these individuals are single, how can they be sexually pure and how can they bear non-biological children? I don't really know. I really hey, look, sir. Hey, sir. Come join us. We're having a conversation. I think your input would be needed. True? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> Let me have a seat. So, Dionji asked a question. How can you answer this question? No, Tiffany asked a question. Sorry. Well, what's the question she's asking? Right. So, since in these individuals are single, how can they be sexually pure and how can they bear non biological children? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Well, for starters, single people cannot be sexually, can't be sexually poor, pure by not engaging in sexual activity, right? You cannot be sexually pure by not engaging in sexual activity. These individuals who are dedicated can bear non-biological children by going out, witnessing to children, bringing them into the church, and even adopting them as their own. So that is how one way that they can solve that problem. All right. All right. Good, good. But wait. Do I have to be married to be a righteous person? <laughs> no, you don't have to be married. Okay. You want more than that? Well, no, because at times in church, there are certain times where a single person wouldn't get a certain position because they aren't married. So they mm. are discriminated against and people deem them to be single-minded and such saying that they, hope they can't do things on their own because they're single. Okay. I agree with Tiffany. Because doing God's work should not be based on being single or married. I don't think so. I have another question which was bothering me for a while now. Who is more susceptible to sin? A single person or a married couple? And if so, so does marriage affect your relationship with Christ? Hard question you're asking me, right? Right. Um, none are more accept susceptible to sin than the other. A single person can be susceptible to temptation as well as a married couple susceptible to temptation. All are susceptible to temptation. So it's only based on Christ. Only Christ can help them to withstand those temptations that are basically sexually based. Nice, nice, nice. So you have any experience from your marriage that will help explain what you're saying? Oh, oh. <sighs> In my, before I was married, I, I wouldn't say I used to be looking around. And yes, I was tempted many times to, to get involved in sexual activities with, with, with well, in those days would have been girls. Um, on my own, I did fail. Right? I did get involved in on marital sex, if you want to put it that way. But then, as, your, as my relationship with Christ grew, you realize I had to, to cut it out. And eventually, I, I got married, right? And even in getting married, while married, there were times Satan tried to pull me into that, that aspect of getting intersex with someone else, but I had to thank God that I was, I never fell into that, so I had to give God thanks and praise that I, I stayed faithful, and I am faithful. Nice, nice. So, so you would say that some in the time period that you were married, that your wife have helped you overcome temptations? Yes. And that has to do with the fact that whatever issue might come up, 
we talk. So it right? also so it all depends on who you marry, basically. Yes, who you marry is a is a big factor in, in that. So right? if I marry a godly man, I am encouraged to live for Christ. Yes. What about you, DeAndre? And if someone from the church marries an ungodly man or woman, they may have many problems in their relationship and spiritually? There is... If somebody married an ungodly person, mm -hmm. or a person who does not believe the same thing that you believe, right. that is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And you'll find yourself, unless two agree, there will be problems. So you all should have the same belief, belief in the same God, same belief in how you should live your lives. Mm. Well, so since uh, he's already married, Sid and the auntie, mm -hmm. what are they really looking for in a woman? I mean, we're coming out of high school just now, going to get career, and soon you have to settle down. God, so man. what? what are they really looking for? Well, I want to hear. <laughs> well, God has blessed me with many talents. So I wouldn't say necessarily I'm looking for somebody who could cook and clean because I could do that myself. But it have times in life that, you know, I may have spiritual struggles. I would like somebody who could stand with me within my spiritual trouble and guide me towards God at all times. Somebody who could comfort me. You know, somebody who I could live with happily and somebody who could, you know... We could raise kids with and raise them as stewards of God. Okay. Same. Well, I am looking for a woman who loves God and will help me um, achieve greater spirituality in Christ and I will help her achieve greater spirituality in Christ. So it's a relationship that both of us are willing to build with each other. But I want to add to that. Eh? You see, like how we all just getting ready to leave school. Don't be too hurried to, to run into that. Find out yourself. Find out who you are. And as you go along and know who you are, sort out your career, what you want to be. Because that is a very intriguing or intrigual part in, in, let's say in your singleness, knowing who you are. Because you're going to face the world of work. And I know sometimes the leaders want to just run into it because you've been, it's potential energy you have. So... Know who God is, know what God has in store for you, know yourself, know your potential, the things that you can do and you will be able to do for God, and let him guide you. Even in the girl or the boy you may meet and win. Your worship. All right. So I have one more question for you. Mm. How can a single person be a blessing in their community? Say again? How can a single person be a blessing in their community? Hmm. I want to use an example. Jesus was in his community, right? Yes. And the Bible says that as he grew, he found favor with God, God and, and with man. man. By being kind. By being helpful to those that you come into contact with. Um, others usually say don't let your name be bad in people's mouth meaning that every time the people in the community see you they say well here goes a young nice young man or young woman right so you have to be an example you have to walk the way Jesus walked so that means that you have to know who Jesus is and walk as he walked 
so that you'll be a blessing in, the com in your community, wherever you are. Okay. Understood. Answer it? Understood. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Any more questions? No, no. I, I don't have any more questions. Neither do I. <laughs> Well, thank you, sir, for helping. It was much appreciated. All right. Thanks, thanks for allowing me to, to join your conversation. Yes. All right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Sid Kenu Smith, and I am the class pastor of the graduating class of 2021. And with such an inspiring message today from Pastor Utley, these are the main points from the sermon. One. We must choose to prioritize God and thus benefit from the security, joy, and magnificence that he gives. And two, God will never abandon us. Even in life's most challenging situations, he will make a way for our deliverance and ultimate happiness. As we go through life, I hope that as students and teachers, we will always remember these two points. Happy Sabbath, everyone. As the premier Christian media host, we are elated to have aired the real life stories of the graduating class of 2021. Our worldwide viewers now have a deeper understanding of how our youths are able to trust God and meet their challenges. Parents, teachers, fellow students, family members, friends, all of you, I am sure have felt the hope the faith, the joy these students have experienced. We can now all appreciate their team for this year. Smile, we are victorious. Christ remains the cornerstone, their foundation, their only hope in these uncertain times of Earth's dramatic history. We at Harmon News Network encourage you to keep prayed up, read your Bibles, live like Jesus and walk with him. We will now break for an important promotion from our sponsors. Principal Mr. Kenma and uh, my business manager Miss Cassandra D. George and I'm happy to be with them at this time and to continue working as a team. We have really come a long way and I know we are going to take this school to higher heights with Jesus. As principal, I have made a conscious effort to build relationships among staff members, that's between myself and them, and also build relationships in their little either committees or teams or departments. I have focused a lot on, or I am focusing a lot on 
raising the bar, ensuring that we are the excellent school. So even in the library, it is my vision that we can have a bigger space and the library will not just be about books, but we can extend our media system so that the students can have an online library and they can even access the library materials from their home. This school for the community is known as a disciplined school. And one of the reasons we can be considered a disciplined school is because for students, we have not tried to make our methods very punitive. We have made them more positive and about changing behaviors. So then you would find that two students get into a fight. And one of the first things we will do is allow the students to report what happened. So you create an atmosphere where they can reflect. They can reflect on where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? And then the adult having more knowledge than the students would sit them down and counsel them. So even if the consequence might be in school suspension. It's not just, I am on my own doing this suspension. I am coming in. I will meet with the dean. I would interview the dean. The dean might ask me to read a book. I may have to do some community service. But at the end, the students are better for who they are and they seldom will repeat that behavior and to me that's really great of a school and that's why some students when they come from another school they're able to say this school is different i guess it's different because too we see everybody as family you may not know their name all of their names but you would show up put a face to that body in front of you. An adult will not pass on this compound and ask you, how are you going? Um, why are you not studying? You know, they would find out about you. Even the teachers, they will go the extra mile to allow the students to get their assignments done, SBAs. I really love when we have Max Camp because that's a time you could interact with the students more, get to know them, and then you're helping them with their maths. I love to when we have year group retreats. This is a time we take the students to another place, somewhere they can socialize together. And they're not socializing alone with their peers. They're socializing with adults. Mm -hmm. So they're hearing about adults' experiences in life and what brought them through. Mm -hmm. And you would find that after this retreat, the students have a different perspective on life. And mm -hmm. to me, that is remarkable and really unique. And it has been a strategy that helped all school, all students achieve. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When the shadows. Oh
I remembered a couple years ago, I had some colleagues come here to visit our school. It was part of our DPED program. And uh, our simple staff worship on mornings, that was a biggie for those staff members, my colleagues. They actually said, you know what it will be like working here every morning you're coming and you're meeting your colleagues, this team spirit um, effect. You meet in to sing of God's goodness and then to pray together. So you're leaving the staff room empowered to teach the students and to know that I'm not going into the classroom alone. I'm going with my friends supporting me and I'm going with God supporting me as well. For, for those who came, the first thing that stood out to them was where we were located. Mm -hmm. We are located in a uh, urban area, so you expect to hear the buzz of the um, transportation business. Mm -hmm. However, somehow in this valley, it's a uh, quietness. It's like you could almost hear when the wind blows, the birds chirp, and uh, the ravine or river running by. And that for us create a peaceful and quiet environment so that the students can concentrate on what they came here to concentrate on, learning. Right? Part of our philosophy also is to keep it simple. So we would have uh, counsel with our students, even with their uniform. The uniform might look very unique, but that's a way for them to keep discipline and to not concentrate on style, but to keep the focus on, I've come to make myself a better person so that I can relate to those who I have to relate to when I go to a workplace or for higher learning. Because it's always my dream to come to Harmon. Um, I guess for me, I'm a person, a peaceful person. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who don't like a lot of crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, crowd. Mm -hmm. So, Hammer would have been my choice because of how small it is. Mm -hmm. And I have always been a spiritual person. So having that spirituality as a thread throughout my uh, secondary school journey would have meant a lot to me. In my sorrows, Lord, walk with me. In my sorrows, Lord, walk with me. When my heart within is I love also what we do at the end of every Monday and Friday chapel. There is what is called a mantra. And the students repeat the mantra. Even after leaving school, you would see some of them putting up on Facebook this mantra. And I will end with the mantra. The mantra simply says, because I'm a child of God, success is mine. Because I'm a child of God, success is surely mine. And because I'm a child of God, success is 
definitely mine. The one thing that I would like you to remember about all Hammond School of Seventh-day Adventists is that every single success story that comes out from here, we accomplished it not by our own might, nor our own power, but by God's Spirit. And that's what we live for. We live to write His story. And we'll continue doing that. God has been with this Christian school throughout the years, from 1952 to today, and he continues to guide them as they prepare young people, not just for this life, but for the one yet to come. Wasn't that a beautiful way to end the first segment here at HNN? Definitely. What a nostalgic moment, looking back at all the good old days, I am sure someone saw their grandfather in one of those pictures. As we move into our midday hour, remember here at Harmon's News Network, we love to give viewers avenues to celebrate. We will take a prayer break at this moment to recognize your need to express your joy in Christ for all that he has done for you, through you, and in you. your hearts in prayers to your king we encourage all of you to keep praying for Harmon and the graduates and speaking of the graduates it's time for the customary parade of the graduates
Let's meet all graduating class of 2021. A pleasant Sabbath to everyone. And our first hymn will be hymn number 381, Holy Sabbath Day of Rest. Come on, let's sing it out as we... Holy Sabbath day of rest By your masters richly blessed God created and divine Set aside for holy time Yes, the holy Sabbath rest By your God divinely blessed it to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. Seek not pleasures of this earth with its folly, noise, and mirth. Say, there are better things in store over on the other shore. Yes. The Holy Sabbath rest by your God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. As the Sabbath draweth on, Friday Eve at set of sun. Christian household then should meet to sing and pray at Jesus' feet. Oh, yes, the holy Sabbath rest by a God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. Oh, Asking him for saving grace, or oh, so victory in the race, and to help us by his power to keep holy every hour. Oh, yes, the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be to well, come on, let's sing the chorus one more time. Saying yes, the holy Sabbath rest by your God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. Amen. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. Come on, let's go. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold But in that city where the mansions will shine I want a gold one, that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never go and someday under we'll never go under but walk the streets that are pure as gold though often tempted tormented and tested i'm like a prophet my pillow of stone and though i find there no permanent dwelling i know he gave me a mansion i own i've got a mansion over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go and someday under yeah, 
we'll never go under but walk the streets that are pure as gold don't take me poorer devoted or lonely i'm not discouraged i'm heaven bound i'm just a pilgrim in search of a city i want a mansion yeah a hop on a crown i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go old and some day under we'll never go under but walk the streets that are pure as gold i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go old and some day under we'll never go under but walk the streets that are pure as gold amen The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost and this song was one of my favorite when I was at school at in those days and we will sing it hoping that I can remember it All right The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost we go Mm, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. He came in might as full as then. His witness to believers one was lost, and multitudes were born again. The early Christians scattered all the world. They preached the gospel fearlessly. Though some were madder than to lions hurl, they march along in victory. Come, Holy Spirit, dark is the all. We need your feelings, your love, and your mighty power. Move now amongst us, stir us, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, revive the school today. Then in an age when darkness gripped the earth, the just shall live by faith was learned. The Holy Spirit gave the school new birth, and Reformation fires burst. In later years, a great revival came when saints shall seek the Lord and pray. Hey, oh, once again, we need that holy flame to meet the challenge of today. Come, Holy Spirit, dark is the all. We need your feelings, your love and your mighty power. Spirit, revive the school today. Come on, let's sing that one more time. Come, Holy Spirit, saying, Dark is the all. We need your feeling, your love, and your mighty power. Move now. Revive the school 
At this point in time, we are going to intercede on behalf of our graduating class. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful for everything that you have done for us as a school thus far, and especially for our graduating class, O oh Lord. You have taken them through this journey. Heavenly Father, we live in some very serious times, and without a faith that is unwavering, Lord, we know we would not be able to stand. So, Lord, the first thing I ask is that you increase our faith and the faith of these students so that they can stand for you come what me. Heavenly Father, we also ask that you will help them to really abide by the principles in your word. In your word, you have given us the recipe for true success. And that is that if we meditate on your word, meditate on your law, and that we really abide by it. So I ask that you will strengthen them so that they can really be overcomers, that they will really have a true success, victory over sin, victory over any attack of the enemy, victory over peer pressure, victory over all the negative influences that the enemy will send their way so that they can truly be soldiers for you, O God. Lord, in your word it is said that if we seek your kingdom first and we seek your righteousness, that everything else will be added. So, Lord, we plead with you that you will stir up the consciences of these students, well, these graduates, so, Lord, that they will truly delight in serving you, delight in doing your will, delight in reading your word, delight in Bible study and all these things, oh, God. And once they do that, everything else in their lives will fall into place. Heavenly Father, I pray for their families as well, that they will stand by them and not leave them, although they are growing up now, O oh God, that they will still give them wise counsel, that they will still continue to pray for them, Lord. The prayers of our parents and our relatives and friends are so important, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you will Give these students or these graduates a sense of direction in these times. So many things are going on, so many different voices in our ears. We don't know which way to go, but Lord, we trust that you will take charge over their footsteps, oh Lord. Hold their hands and walk with them every step of the way. Lord, at the end of it all, we all want to be saved in your kingdom when you do come. We all want to be able to smile and say that we were victorious over sin through your power. And uh, we can only do that with your strength. So Lord, we ask for your strength for us, for ourselves, and also for the students. Lord, this is my prayer on behalf of this graduating class. In Jesus' name, amen. All of us are in need of a savior. And it's through the word of God that we are changed. It is through the word that we are blessed sanctified and consecrated into his fellowship and service and what a better way to become like christ to learn of him and how to live a victorious life than through his word who is our feature speaker for today caricia well he is specifically chosen by the graduating class and he is from mason hall he drives a subaru and he loves vegetable food but he has a special liking for curry. <laughs> One of his greatest opportunities to know and understand the power of Christ was when he was hospitalized at his weakest moments, spiritually and mentally. He was able to trust in the power of intercessory prayer. In the end, he smiled because he was victorious. Mm -hmm. He is humble, approachable, a true servant leader and a person who has a genuine care for youth. He is married to the beautiful Minette and they have two lovely children. Today, he keeps on smiling and enjoys sharing the joy of Christ. Oh yes, I know of whom you speak. Past Harmonite, a humble man, Pastor Lowell Utley, will deliver the word as he consecrates the graduating class of 2021 to Christ. I thank you for that beautiful introduction. 
And I must say that it is a pleasure to be here today celebrating. You see, this is the day that the Lord has been orchestrating over five years now. The day in which each Harmonite of 5A1 and 5A2 can rejoice and celebrate the successful completion of another leg of the academic relay of life. The day in which each parent and well-wisher can look back in thanksgiving for the role the Harmon High School would have played in your child's overall development. Sonrie Somos Victorioso, you qualify to smile and say a word today, for you celebrate a collective victory not with no man or woman left behind. I remember the motivational session we had uh, on May 5th, earlier this year, two days before the last lockdown, where I, was, I dealt with the topic overcoming the fears within you. But look at you today, beaming in pomp and splendor because you made it through the masks, the social distancing, the SBAs, through the multiple choices, through the written papers, and even through the practicum sessions. We celebrate today because God has been excellent. Your teachers have been devoted. Your parents or guardians have been supportive. And despite the overarching limitations and setbacks of COVID-19, you know how to continue with positive thoughts, positive uh, fueling positive feelings, ultimately resulting in positive behavior as purpose-driven children of the Most High God. Please stay with me as we consider for the next few moments the topic. To continue smiling, you must choose wisely. To continue smiling, you must choose wisely. Father, now, even now, use me as your instrument. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It was 2005 when car enthusiasts around the world responded with a frenzy when the Bugatti Veyron was released, the fastest street legal passenger car in, with a friction-defying 1,001 horsepower, Named after Pierre Veyron, it had a top speed of 407 kilometers per hour. This is in comparison to my Subaru with just 21.4 horsepower. Lord have mercy. 1,001 horsepower. But you see, after the company did the Veyron Bugatti, it did not stop there because the Bugatti Chiron was released recently with 1,500 horsepower. It can literally go from 0 to 400 kilometers per hour in 42 seconds with a top speed of about 439.35 kilometers per hour. However... Bugatti continues to push the horsepower limits because when it comes to excellence, even when you have a seemingly excellent outcome, you cannot stop. Graduates, when it comes to being your best, you must choose to not settle. You, must, you need to push the limits, not only the limits of your mental capacity, you need to push the limits of your faith in an all-powerful God. Yes, there has been much improvements from the day you entered Harmon to this 21st day of July 2021. But you are not at the top of your game yet. Consult with God, your creator, and continue to work on the upgraded version of yourself, if you please. The one that will be able to surpass the limits of time into God's eternity. I guess that's why your class text, you know, it declares in Psalm 16 verses 8 and 9, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And verse 9, it continues, it says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. You see, we set the Lord before us because he is sovereign. He is our protector, and in him we can find refuge. There is no earthly power that is greater than him. The best thing you can do as you transition from Harmon High School is to continue to, fall, to find delight in 
the things of God and reject all other spirits or beings that encourages you to forget the call of God upon your life. Remember the things of God. You see, picking up a few verses earlier in Psalm 16 from verse 5, the word of God said, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. You see, in the lines are fallen unto me. The lines are fallen upon unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly inheritance. I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. You see, if you want to experience an upgrade in your operating system, you need the support, the beautiful blessings, and the instructions from the Lord. But wait. The phrase, my mind instructs me in the night, as it were, it points in the Hebrew to the idea, my kidneys instruct me in the night. It's very interesting. You see, verse 7, if I will bless the Lord who has advised me, indeed my mind instructs me in the night. In the NASB version, it's rendered... Uh, so as our kidneys take out the toxins and extra water from our body, the Lord daily continues his sanctification process upon us, taking out the toxins of sin and other items not beneficial to us from our lives. A perfect process. However, from the medical perspective, if a person has kidney failure, dialysis becomes a necessary alternative. But as a man-made alternative, whether hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, it is not 100% accurate and has several associated pros and cons. You see, when we try solutions to fix ourselves, we may have some success, but with with many associated complications and challenges. I came, I came today to remind the graduating class that the alternative is never as good as the original. Thus, surrender to God and he will fix you up in the night season, even giving you the necessary kidney transplant and a new lease on life if you need it. You see, you might have had a, a traumatic past, but God will clean you up from within so you can smile again. You might have had some failures, but God can renew your hope from within so you can dream again. You might have had persons that gave you bad advice and mess you up but God can properly advise you from this moment onwards so you can step forward with confidence again you see God is sovereign and will bless you with pleasant experiences beauty power happiness magnificence safety and joy when you prioritize him above all other persons or things in your life you see, your class text, it says in Psalm 16, verses 8 and 9, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell in securely, will dwell securely. You see, the verse begins with the words, I have set it begins with the word, I have set. You see, I have set, not your teacher, not your parent, not even your pastor. It says, I have set. You see, David declares, I have set at this time as a kind of big man thing. He's taking uh, authority and responsibility for his actions uh, because at the end of the day, it's only big men can make up their minds as to what the best course of action would be. Big men can decide when enough time has been utilized in vain pursuits and the real productive work needs to be done. Big men know when that the best friend to have is Jesus and to the gentlemen of of the graduating class you can set the Lord continually before you because you're a big man you're not the same little boy that entered Harmon's you have matured you have grown and today you could say I will set the Lord before me 
You see, serving God is a chance. And you can resolve today as that big man to serve God for the rest of your life. Some of you began Harmon as a baptized child of God. Some of you got baptized as a student at Harmon. Yet some of you will get baptized because of your experience at Harmon's in the not too distant future. But in all instances, I'm encouraging you to continue with the Lord beyond the walls of Harmon's because it's a choice and you need to make that choice. Graduates choose to continue every day with the Lord. And he will bless you with pleasant experiences, with beauty, with power, with happiness, with magnificence, with strength and joy. All that you need to be your best. Choose because to continue smiling, you must choose your guide wisely. Choose the Lord. But you know, this is where the thing gets really interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and it gets really sweet because the word of God says, because he is at my right hand, uh, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. You see, when a couple is escorting each other to a destination hand in hand, the male is generally on the, on the, on the right side of the female and his left hand is engaged. But, and his right hand is free. So his left hand is engaged. So, so when, when the Bible verse makes reference to at thy right hand, essentially God is connecting to you as your man. He's connecting to you as the one that has your back, if you please. Are there any ladies in the class today who are looking for a real honest man to take their hands? You see, God wants to boost your confidence so that you will never be shaken. And that's why he wants to hold your hands. You see, ladies, when God is your man, all dogs move. When God is your man, he will provide shade from the heat or condemnation of the enemy. When God is your man, he will stand up for you. When God is your man, your joy will be fulfilled and you will have no need for no honor man or devil because God is all, that, all the man that you need and could handle. Ladies, you can have confidence in God today, but you must choose to prioritize God and thus benefit from the security, the joy, and the magnificence he gives. But whether a big man of choice or a God-secured lady, we will find happiness and security in the Lord. The Good News Bible in Psalm 91 verses 1 to 4, it says, Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, You are my defender and protector. You are my God. In you I trust he will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You see, God is perfecting a plan in your life. And he will not allow any setback or set up of the enemy to prevent you from experiencing your upgrade. But you know, there's a word of caution I want to issue today. You see, there are some situations in life that are not clear-cut. Not clear-cut good and not clear-cut bad. They fall in what we call the gray areas of life. Could be an interested boy who wants to be your friend, or an interested girl who wants to be your friend, or a new practice that you cannot find a clear thou shall not in the word of God. If you have doubt as to the authenticity of something or someone, remember the old Chelsea proverb or idiom which says, when in doubt, do nothing. When in doubt, do nothing. Or as old people say, when in doubt, do it out. You see, when in doubt, we need to understand that if the right course of action is not clear in a situation, you need to slow down, stop, 
Do nothing and seek God's divine guidance as opposed to doing something or someone. Somebody heard that. Doing something or someone you might regret. You see, like Gideon, you need to put your fleece out and then put it out a second time because some choices can make you smile or break you to a frown. Remember, all that glitters is not gold. But once you are always wisely choosing the things of God, you will one day be able to walk on streets of gold with a perpetual smile on your face. You see, we can celebrate today and smile from air to air because God will never abandon us, even in life's most challenging situations. He will make a way for our deliverance and ultimately our happiness. He says in his word in Isaiah chapter 50, 54 verse 10, For the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that had mercy on thee. On top of that, 2 Timothy chapter 14 verse 18, it says, And the Lord shall preserve me from all evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. But even more than this you see sometimes some of us we would have gone through feelings of abandonment and we know what it feels like the hurt and the uncertainty and the deprivation and the maltreatment and all the other negative things but you know there's a word for you as well because Psalm 27 verse 10 it says when my father and my mother forsake me then the Lord will take me up I don't know about you but God is in the lifting up business I don't know about you but God is in the rescuing business I don't know about you but God is in the business of consistently showing us that he loves he cares and he will be there to take us through that's why Jesus came died and conquered death and the grave in the resurrection to deliver our souls from the portals of hell as a caring father. That's why Jesus is our mediator in the heavenly sanctuary and will one day return to take us to that place where there'll be no more threat of death, decay, and devil because he would, we would be happy eternally in his presence. Christ is our righteousness and deliverer. To continue smiling, graduates, you must choose him wisely the psalm of david in our, our main text in 16 it ends with the summary you will make known to me the way of life in your presence in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore hallelujah you have been taught graduates but there are yet some lessons for you to learn. You have received the foundation. Now I invite you to step into the graduate and the postgraduate levels in your relationship with the Lord. Harmon could have only done so much. It's up to you to take the knowledge you have received and demonstrate your wisdom in using it to transform your life and experience. Additionally, in the groom position, the left hand is engaged, as I mentioned earlier, but the right hand is free. The right hand is free. In times of defense, the right hand can wield a sword. And we know that God will be our defense. So even though he has us on, on his arm, he can defend the enemy and keep us safe. But in times of peace, the right hand can be used not for foreplay or for temporal satisfaction, but for fulfilling of our needs according to his riches in glory. The powerful right hand shall feed us. For the word of God says in Psalm 30 verse 8, feed me with food convenient for me. The hand of God will protect us. For the word of God says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. In Psalms 34 verse 15 the hand of the Lord will strengthen us for the word of God says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up the hand of the Lord will deliver us the Bible says there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling the hand of the Lord shall give us favor for Psalm 23 verse 5 it says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies the hand of the Lord 
shall secure our borders. From Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, it says, As part of God's church, it declares that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The hand of the Lord shall defeat all variants affecting us. For Psalm 106, verse 10, it says, And he shall save them from the hand of him that hated them and redeem them from the hand of the enemy. The hand of the Lord shall cover not only the mouth and the nostrils, but all of us. For the Bible says in Psalm 91, verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. The hand of the Lord shall help you and it shall restore the health of those who are affected or infected. For the Bible says in Joel chapter 2 verse 25, And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. You see, in totality, God will use his hand to fix humanity. Not by adding a vaccine to our polluted blood, but by cleansing our entire system, putting in a new heart, putting in the fresh blood of the lamb. Is anybody here? Not all wine, not new wine into all wine skins, but retransforming us totally from within and without, so we can reflect the glory of God. And finally. On that day when he returns for our glorification, we will receive a new heart, a new body, a new place, a new presence, a new reason to celebrate and smile in pomp and majesty. For in Jesus Christ, the victory will be perpetual. We can smile a big, broad smile when Jesus says, well done. And graduates, that's my desire and my prayer for all of you, that you live your life in such a way that when he comes to take us home, he, you will be able to hear those beautiful words, well done, and boss a smile if you please. You see, God is sovereign and will bless you with pleasant experiences, beauty, power, happiness, magnificence, safety, and joy when you prioritize him above all other persons or things in your life. You see, when you put God first, you can declare, I am a conqueror. I will be a success. I am not chained by my path. I will be ready for Jesus' return. I can totally fulfill my life's purpose. When you put God first, you will be able to affirm I am the boss in Jesus name I am a winner I am an overcomer I am saved in Jesus I am special gifted and birthed with a purpose when you put God first you'll be able to realize your confidence and acknowledging the dangers of life but at the same time relying on God's right hand and not being trapped by the flood of fear you'll have confidence God will help you to have your success as, as the most successful and awesome person in your family, breaking the glass ceiling of circumstance and hereditary choices. God will help you to have your salvation in a consistent saving relationship with Jesus despite the sins of your past, present, or even those you're about to commit in the future. God will help you and build your reliance upon him because no temptation of the enemy will come to you that you will not be able to handle. And even if you think you can't handle it, God will make a way of escape and you will overcome the temptation with joy because he's the one leading you into the victory. But remember that to continue smiling, you must choose wisely the things of God. And as you trust in the Lord and surmount every challenge or temptation with victory, you will be able to smile because you know that it's only because of his grace that you are able to choose wisely. Smile for Jesus. Smile and be victorious. Sonríe somos victorioso. God will bless you with your present experiences, with your beauty with power, with happiness, with magnificence, with safety, with joy. When you choose him above all other persons and things in your life, blessings and eternal success to you, graduating class. And remember to smile as God gives you the victory. Yes, this has really been a beautiful morning celebrating victories in Christ celebrating his provision, 
his strength and his deliverance. He holds our future and there is no need to fear. Thank you, Pastor Utley, and thank you, Class Pastor, for your response. And we are thankful to our Heavenly Father for all he has done, and we will continue to trust him more and more in these uncertain times. Bow our heads and close our eyes to pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, dear God. We thank you for this consecration service, dear Lord. And we ask that you guide the graduating class of 2021 in their future endeavors. And that you bless the rest of this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we close, we leave you with the class song of the graduating class of 2021. The lyrics of this song were written by the students and produced by the music department at Harmon School of SD. We thank you for spending your time with us this Sabbath morning. We invite you to join us tomorrow for the second segment of the Harmon graduation, which commence on Sunday at 2 p.m. streaming from ASI Studios. Taking one step at a time, don't know what to face next. Getting for them back then. In this world, we're not alone. Don't know why I face next, but wish I knew this about them. Oh, and I, it's family. And family means no one's left behind. We will stay.
Mission School of Seven Day Adventists cordially invites you to a celebration, a ceremony, a culmination of a journey. We will be celebrating our graduating class of 2021. The team, Sunrays Somos Victoriosos, a smile. We are Victoria. The venue, join us virtually on ASI Media Tobago. The time on Saturday, the 21st of August, 2021. From 9.15 a.m., we will have the consecration service. And on Sunday, the 22nd of August, 2021, from 2 p.m., we will have the commencement exercise where they will receive their certificates. Come, let's connect as one family. Remember, it's on ASI Media Tobago, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. We are looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you.